And ladies and gentlemen, Zach Wilson is gone! <laughs> <laughs> what a Monday! Finally! It's <laughs> happened! We'll hit everything on this fine Monday afternoon. But Aaron Boone, let me tell you something about Aaron Boone. He's just trying to manage a baseball game. Mm-hmm. And you've got Hunter Wendelstadt ejecting him from a game because a kind gentleman was at the game acting like a fan. A guy sitting, and I know he's listening right now to Blue Sweater Guy, who took it off. (laughs) But to Blue Sweater Guy, who is solely responsible for Aaron Boone being ejected from this game, we want to hear from you. Because I'm on your side. If you missed Mm -hmm. it earlier this afternoon, the Yankees are playing the Oakland A's. Oh, by the way, they had three hits and lost. Mm. But early in this game, we're talking five pitches into the game, there is a hit batsman of Asturi Ruiz. And Aaron Boone politely says, hey, what's going on? Maybe you should check the check swing. And home plate umpire Hunter Wendelstadt says, hey, actually, you know what? You don't need to hear me describe it. Ladies and gentlemen, here's exactly how it sounded right here on WFAN. Tyler Nevin hitting 286. Hey, He's been... You're not yelling at me. I did what I was supposed to do at check. I'm looking for him to get hit by the pit. You got anything else to say? Well, those going. microphones work really well, Susan, down well, the field. Well, that's what happens when you have an echo in here. This not developed. Did everybody hear that? It was, it was, he didn't swear or anything. It was fine. And, and Hunter Wendell oh. said it's just throwing out Aaron Oh, Boone. boy. Who said it? You're gone. Now, you hear what he said? I don't care who said it because Aaron didn't say anything. <laughs> Blue sweater guy said something. Wow. And that caused Hunter Wendelstadt to throw him out of the game. So, number one for Blue Sweater Guy, who's right now sitting in massive, massive mm-hmm. traffic. His cell phone has blown up. First of all, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Yes. I'm on your side. You will be identified. There is no way you won't be. So, you <laughs> might as well come clean and come talk to us right now. You, now. you can make up a name, Blue Sweater Guy. You could call yourself, like, There's Jerome no way you can't or make Martin. Up a name. It was too front and center. <laughs> Somebody knows who he is going to be put on blast, and we're going to know who it is. So yeah. Just call us and confess. It's but he, all good. But he did take the blue sweater off. Right. That wouldn't confuse you? The reason you need to call because we need to know what you said. Exactly what you said. Yeah, I'm curious. We can't hear it. We hear uh, Wendell, what's his name? Wendell Hunter Wendelstadt. Wendelstadt. We yeah. hear Wendelstadt clearly. Right. Like, it's like the mic is connected to him, but we don't hear the fan that's right behind him. So. Now, what, what could he possibly have said? You I think don't he know. said, hey, shut up, fat ass? You think he went fat? Probably. Do you think he Probably. said, hey, you only have a job because your dad? <laughs> <laughs> Harry Wendelstadt. Like, what did he possibly say? It was something offensive. It so? definitely wasn't baseball related. You think he cursed at him? Uh, probably not cursed. I can't. I don't know his personality at all. I don't even know who it is. So I can't say that he cursed. But I get it was something derogatory it, towards the the ump specifically. See, I'm not even convinced it's derogatory because here's what I think with Hunter Wendelstadt. It's an early Monday afternoon game. Mm. He has no interest in being there. He's in a very bad mood. It's day game after travel day, and Hunter Wendelstadt was in no mood. So I think there's a chance Blue Sweater Guy said something as innocent as, hey, Hunter, why don't you make the call? And then Hunter lost his mind. Now, you heard Susan say there was no cursing from Aaron Boone. She spoke too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, (laughs) after Aaron Boone got ejected, the mics were still hot. Try to hear what Aaron had to say. He was hot. Right. Now, here's what Aaron's he got to realize. He got his money's worth and got up in his face. You think he should have done more? 100%. But if he was already, you can't take it back. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I wrong, erroneously ejected you. You can stay. Right. You can't take it back. No. So you might as well have gotten his money's worth. Well, I think there's two things here. Number one, there is clearly a list, and Aaron Boone is on it. Now, mm-hmm. Aaron denied this in the post game. If you were listening about 10 minutes ago, he was asked, hey, do you think there's a vendetta against you? Do you think that mm-hmm. umpires are out to get you? And I'm here to say they are because Aaron Boone has a reputation yeah. because he gets a check. He's 35 ejections. I know. Because he screams and yells a lot. But it's got to be individual, right? It's got to be based on a history with that one person. He has no history with Hunter exactly. Wendelstadt. At least he said he didn't. So at least no public history with Hunter Wendelstadt. But, maybe, I mean, I don't think he's on a list that, oh, umpi- yeah, yeah. that umpires are sharing I amongst think- each other. Be careful when you get the Yankees. Uh, Aaron Boone's going to say something to you. It's going to piss Tiggy, you off. Tiggy. Just wait for it. Don't There's you no think, way. as an NFL player, there were certain players who had reputations around the league to officials? Uh, Just like there were officials that had no. reputations to you? Well, I think it's different because most players were scared of the officials. 
because the last thing you wanted to do was get tossed right. because of the, the the fine, which to a football player is is significant. Yeah, yeah. Right to a baseball player with guaranteed money, you get fined fifty thousand dollars. Who cares? But right. if you're a football player and you're making, I don't know. Two hundred and sixty or three hundred thousand dollars, you get fined twenty thousand dollars. I know you don't deal. want to get ejected, but so guys... the only people who talk to refs in the NFL were quarterbacks, right? Because they kind of had a I don't know, a, I don't know, I don't know, whatever, some relationship with them because they, they also were always dealing with they also them. knew they weren't getting thrown out of the game, of course, <laughs> and they're always protected. But I think guys do have reputations, and Aaron Boone has a reputation. That's number one. Number two, and this is the part Aaron didn't realize when he was ejected in the first inning. Aaron Boone. Not to everybody, because I'm sure there were some Yankee fans who see through it. He has changed the conversation away from the fact that the Yankee bats have been limp. That the Yankee bats, even over the weekend against Tampa, and certainly on this Monday afternoon against the immortal J.P. Sears, the Yankee bats have done very little over the last couple of days. Yep. And I think what Aaron Boone's ejection and Aaron Boone's kind of situation from Monday and Blue Sweater Guy did is it took the attention away from the fact that as a whole, the offense is doing nothing. And number two, and number two is probably number one, Aaron Judge is doing nothing. Mm. Now, I battle with this as a baseball fan. It is a long-ass season. I learned that, actually, from Aaron Boone. <laughs> he said that once before, and it's a wise comment. It is a long-ass season. And guys are going to slump. Okay, we have seen this all throughout baseball with different players and different teams. So I'm going to tell you right now to all the Yankee fans out there, take a big, 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 what is it, br fresher breath air? Fresher breath air? Just a breath of fresh air. No, a deep breath. Deep breath! Yes. There you go. <laughs> Let's all do it together. One, two, three. <gasps> Uh, I know we're discounting Aaron Boone getting ejected in the first inning because Brad Ausmus took over. He's got managerial experience. Yeah, I bad just, managerial I just, experience. I just, I just wonder in the ninth inning if he would have put in Clay Holmes as no. opposed to Victor Gonzalez no, no, because first, it was a non-save situation. No, no, because after the game, Aaron Boone answered every question like he was still managing the team. <laughs> hey, Aaron, did you think of bunting with Jose Trevino? No. Hey, Aaron, why didn't you go to Clay Holmes? Like, Aaron Boone wasn't even pretending in his post-game mm -hmm. press conference. He's like, yeah, so this is why I did this and that. But the offense <laughs> sucks. That's why they lost. Of and course it is. Aaron Judge, for now, because it is April 22nd, okay, and things can change. And the only thing you can bring up that would cause you to say maybe something's off is the idea of him being injured. But the fact that he's out there every day leads me to think he's not injured. Aaron Judge is not done. Aaron Judge is not guaranteed to have a bad season. Mm. And this slump would not concern me quite yet. Now, I understand why Yankee fans on Saturday afternoon decided to boo his ass. Because you're frustrated. You're a Yankee fan. You spend a lot of money to go to a baseball game. You don't boo because you hate. You don't boo because you take it personal. You boo because you're frustrated. And Aaron Judge right now is a mess. Yeah, especially when you get handed a bobblehead as soon as you walk into the stadium, and then he goes 0 for 4. You think that contributed to the booing? Of course it did. 100%. Wait a second. Did. So if there was so no Aaron celebrate, Judge. Let's celebrate Aaron Judge. It's going to what is, John Sterling's retiring. He's going to. Have a ceremony on the field, and guess what? Aaron Judge, it's his bobblehead day. He's going to have a huge day today, and then he strikes out four times. What do you think? What else were they going to do? So the Yankee fan booed because they were upset that they got this dopey bobblehead, the and he question, was over for four. The question I'm curious about is whether or not people took him home. Well, what would you think they did? Throw it know. on the field? No, just left it. <laughs> no, I got to throw it. That, that, throw it on the field would be dis disrespectful. <laughs> but just kind of left it. No. Just, you Aaron. know how much that costs on eBay right now? What a bobblehead! Yes, I don't know how many. I mean, how how much? I would guess if you looked right now, thirty bucks. Mm. Nobody's leaving the Aaron Judge bobblehead. Mm. That would be more disrespectful than booing him. <laughs> booing I, him, I, I understand. No, that's my point. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's my point. Nobody you're, left the bobblehead. You're, just, you're so upset with him, you just left it as a sign of get it right, Aaron Judge. Otherwise, no. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I'm half joking. Yeah, no, you better be because there's no, there is not one person that on purpose decided to protest Aaron Judge's over four by saying I'm going to leave this on the ground for four with four strikeouts. By now. the way, most of them are going for north of a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. How many Some did, I mean, north they of hundred? Must not have made a ton of them. So that's that's probably why. Well, look, it was for the first eighteen thousand people that all showed right. up, right? So, I mean, I'm sure they made more than that, but the only way you could get it is by going to the game. Look, it's funny with fans. I personally am not a booer, but I'm also not a lecturer mm -hmm. to those who spend their money and go to games. I understand why one may be frustrated. I understand if you spent Monday afternoon, an off day, your kids are in spring break, 
you take your kids to a Yankee game, and you spend a lot of money. And you sit there, and while it was a mildly entertaining game, you saw some really good pitching from Carlos Rodon. No shame in that. I think this was far and away his best performance as a Yankee. Seven dominant innings, and I do not shortchange it because of the opponent. I think that's ridiculous. No matter who you pitch well against, Teak, to me, it always counts. Of course. So you got to see a great performance by Carlos Rodon. You got to see the sideshow of Aaron Boone. But you are frustrated when you see an offense that does absolutely nothing. So I get why a fan boos. I was curious on Saturday because Aaron really heard it on Saturday. He didn't hear it as much yesterday and Mm -hmm. today. So maybe your point is right that the bobblehead had something to do with it. I was curious. Like, would that trend continue from Yankee fans? And the truth is, it really didn't no, yesterday didn't. and today. No, it didn't. Today, you were just more frustrated with everybody. Right, because no, it wasn't just Aaron Judge that was, wasn't was hitting. It was, I mean, Volpe gets a hit right at the beginning of the game. First, his first at bat. First pitch, wasn't it? Yep. I think it was. First, first pitch, pitch of the game. Yep. Stanton gets a hit. And eventually, you're kind of like, all right, maybe they'll figure, they'll figure J.P. Sears out. They know this kid. He was in their system a while ago. They know this kid. Mm, nope, they didn't. No. And so the frustration is just an extension of what we've seen for a lot of this season. It hasn't been the whole season because there's been some games where they 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 crush. They put up cricket numbers, but too many of these games they're not scoring enough runs. And if if they score three runs, all they need is three runs. Their right. pitching has been pretty good. Pitching's been awesome. Right. I was just reading the game notes from this weekend. When they score three runs, fifteen and two. Yeah. They just don't. The games that they don't score runs, you know that they're not going to score right. runs. And it's, the, it's odd. And the offense is supposed to be their strength. Right. So when they don't score runs, it jumps out at you even more. Now, when Aaron Judge got booed on Saturday, I was curious. I was curious to see what the radio guys would say about it, what the TV guys would say about it. And so I went back, and I listened. And our radio guys, Justin Shackle, Susan Wallman, didn't say a word. I checked out the TV guys, Michael Kay, and I really? forget who was doing the game with him. I think it was Jeff Nelson. I'm trying to remember. Maybe it was David Cohn. Maybe it was Paul. I, I forgot now. There was a lot of voices this weekend. They did not say a word. I checked the Tampa Bay uh, Ray TV announcers to see what would they say about Aaron Judge being booed. They didn't say a word. But then I got to the Tampa Bay Rays radio announcers. Hey, there it is. And they had a lot to say about Aaron Judge being booed. Take a listen. Swing and a miss. He struck him out, and Judge has struck out four times. How do you boo your franchise player in his bobblehead day? I mean, really, I know they're passionate, but come on. As I heard earlier someone say, it's like they eat their young, or they eat their own. <laughs> that was a former New York athlete. What do you think of that? Do, do, do we eat our own? Uh... <laughs> You don't eat them, but you do nibble on them. <laughs> you definitely. You take some chunks out for sure. Were we nibbling on Aaron Judge on Saturday? 100%. What, I mean, I wonder how many. Okay, so people didn't leave the bubbleheads. I wonder how many of them got broken. Oh, you, you, Tiki, you <laughs> are. I'm just curious. I love you. You're lost on this. Why do you know how lost? valuable these bobbleheads are? Yeah, I mean, clearly it's one point what eight million dollars of bobbleheads sitting out there right now. If you take <laughs> right. the, if you take the eBay value so, or whatever uh, the heck Sean was looking at. So, on what planet would somebody who is at the game on Saturday, frustrated by the offense doing nothing, decide to protest by either breaking the bobblehead okay. or leaving the bobblehead? Are bobble you telling head? me you haven't watched? And now maybe it's fake and just just memeable. Yeah. Content. You haven't seen these people get pissed off at the let's pick this, the Dallas Cowboys right. and break their TV. You've not, you haven't. Tell me you haven't seen that. Completely different. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the same thing. No, it's it's not. a piece of material. I don't know possession that you that you're upset with, and you you hit it, you break well, it, you smash it. You know what the difference is? And I'm mm. going to compliment the Yankee fans that booed him because again, even though I'm not a booer, I understand it. I understand it. Like, the Yankee fan loves Aaron Judge. It's kind of similar to what the announcers said, the Ray announcers. Aaron Judge is your baby, okay? He's your beautiful, beautiful baby. And he's growing up, man, and this baby's awesome. He's becoming a man. (laughs) He's becoming a superstar. But then, when your baby slumps, you're more disappointed in him than you are anybody else. For example, Anthony Rizzo can't get his head out of his ass. Glaber Torres, same thing, has his head directly up his ass. You are less likely to boo Glaber Torres and Anthony Rizzo because they're not your beautiful, handsome baby. Good point. The way Aaron Judge is. Good point. So sometimes when you boo a guy, there are different kinds of booing. So it's a boo with love. It's a boo with love. There's different kinds of booing. There's I hate you, go F yourself boo. We call that the Gallo, the Joey oh. Gallo, right? And then you've got the, oh, man, I love you, bro. I don't want to do this. You know how I feel about you. 
but you suck right now, and I need to remind you. Oh. And that's the boo that Aaron got on Saturday. Oh. And if he doesn't pick it up soon, he's going to hear a this lot more like of it. This was like mamas back in the day when they would spank you and you were allowed to. <laughs> this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Yes. No, it ain't, mama. <laughs> Wait, so are you, as a, as an athlete who played in this town, are you bothered that Aaron Judge got booed, or are you okay with it? Do you understand? Did I explain it well to you? I get it. I understand oh, it. Um, I, you know, you, you, you kind of, when you're being playing as poorly as he is, or as poorly as I was in moments in my career, the booing kind of makes you realize that I need to fix myself. And Aaron said that. Of course he did. And it's, it's not, you don't. Look at it as they hate you. They just want you to be better. Look, and he's going to be better. I know today, if you watch this game, I think what's frustrating about his 0 for 4 was the fact that he missed a lot of cookies. There were a lot of pitches that normally Aaron Judge crushes, and he didn't do that. And it's tough sometimes early in the season because you need to see those results. And so far, Aaron Judge is at 178. Right. And so you don't see those results. But I can tell you right now, I think Met fans are seeing this with Francisco Lindor. Take a deep breath and give it time. Great players will remind you that they're great. Of course. And Sean has a message for you. Just boo Aaron Judge. Make sure you don't boo Juan Soto. Yeah, <laughs> you're damn right. And by the way, I support all the Yankee fans. Get your frustrations out on Judge now. We you can't like boo Soto all year. That's yes. right. Because Soto had a kind of a, an awful 0 for 4. Now he's yeah. off to a great start. He's nowhere close to being booed. But if the Yankee offense doesn't pick it up and Juan Soto goes through an 0 for 20, what I'm saying right now about Judge he, being booed would be very different with I Juan just, Soto. You better be careful with him because he's, he's not your little baby. He's the girl that you're really trying to convince to stay in your bed. Right. You just She's the one you want to marry. But Juan Soto's never going to go for 20. Just never going to happen. Never? Never. Oh, those are their famous last never. words. Never say never. <laughs> never. Has he ever gone over 20? Yes. I've gone, oh, yeah. You want me to go through his career archives? He's never been a high-priced Yankee before, so I assure <laughs> you that's coming. We'll get to your calls. A lot to get to. We'll get you set for tonight's Nick Sixers game, including the keys to the game. And if everybody's ripping Yankee fans for booing Aaron Judge because they're too negative, what about people ripping Nick fans for celebrating too hard after winning game one? <laughs> we'll try to juxtaposition that. But let's hear from you. Pat's calling from Middletown. What's up, Pat? I, I, I want to call him for... The bobbleheads, Tiki, I can assure you that nobody was breaking bobbleheads. People were guarding them with their lives. <laughs> I ended Leave, up selling. leaving them in the package. I ended up se- <laughs> oh, yes. People were buying bags to keep them in. They were guarding them with their life. I ended up selling one to a dad and his son for 70 bucks. Oh, oh my God. God. Get out of here. Was there any part of you that felt bad as you took the money from them? <laughs> Just be honest with me. All uh, right, wait. So. I had three. He only saw two. I brought my son to his first game ever, so he thought I only had two. And the father walks up, and he's like, hey, how much is that worth to you? And I was like, how much is it worth to you? <laughs> so it's a good question. He ends up going Answer 50. A question with a he question. goes 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah, so he goes 50 bucks. And I was like, ah, I was like, people are asking to buy him for 50 bucks everywhere. So then he goes 70, and I see his son walk up, and I was like, all right, yeah. Yeah. You know, you could have got a hundred. You could have got a hundred. Look, bet. he did nothing wrong. I mean, honestly, this is a, a business transaction. Guy wanted it, right. but if I was at that game, this is where I'm a sucker. I will freely admit this. If I'm at that game, and I have an extra bobblehead, like I've already pleased my kids, everybody's mm-hmm. got that bobblehead, and a guy or gal comes up to me with their kid and says, "How much?" I would buckle under the pressure and literally hand the bobblehead over. <laughs> and, I, and I feel bad saying that, but that's the dead, dead honest truth. Right. You would have been like, I'll give you this bobblehead, but you got to promise you're going to go to Barnes & Noble and buy my book, <laughs> my Mets Bible. I wouldn't even do that. <laughs> but that's a pretty good idea. So it's 18,000 bobbleheads, correct, Sean? Like, that was the number? First, and remember, this was rescheduled because of the rainout last year. That's why they announced, like, 47,000 people on Saturday. And I'm sure a lot of people wanted to pay tribute to John Sterling as mm-hmm. well. But that was a really, really hot ticket because of these bobbleheads. That's why the idea. Dude, is he telling me that 30,000 people went home disappointed? Yes. Because they didn't get a bobblehead? That's correct, yes. And so that now, the secondary market is worse than ticket prices yes. to the NBA Finals game? Yes. Because right now they're $100. By next week, they're going to be at 
Three hundred and fifty dollars. I don't know if they're going to go up. I don't but know, eighteen thousand of us. It's not like they're doing this every every week. No, you're right. They're not going to. I mean, when's the next? Is there another? There's not going to be another Aaron Judge bobblehead. No, day, but is there's there? Garrett Cole Star okay, Wars Day. Garrett Cole. He's and not George a Costanza. Baby. Yeah, forget all of that. When's the next Aaron Judge? Our franchise player, the guy who's supposed to be the, the, the mighty Casey at the bat. When's the next bobblehead day? Is there another one the for answer, Aaron Judge like yes, this? No. The answer is no. No. And so. This ticket, which is now, I mean, this guy had, Pat had three of them. Yeah. How do you get three of them? Well, he's taking his family. <laughs> Think about so. it. He's not going by yeah. himself. Yeah, the the so. toughest part about getting the bobblehead is that you got to get there early. Because if it's the first 18,000 people, you can't show up for a 1 o'clock game at 12.15. Yeah, be you like, got to show up at like, like 10 a.m. Where's my bobblehead? Y'all didn't save a bobblehead for me? <laughs> Can I get a bobblehead? <laughs> Did John Sterling get a bobblehead at least? And let me just say this about John Sterling Day, because this is really pissing me off. Mm. This annoys me. So John Sterling was honored so beautifully by our radio station and certainly by the New York Yankees. I listened to the press conference. And let me just say to Emmanuel Barbari, Emmanuel, I feel you, bro, because you may have missed it. Mm. John very innocently was talking about the advice he would give to Justin Shackle and Emmanuel Barbari. And? and he called him Emilio. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, this... Hey. I, I mean this from the heart, Emmanuel, and I hope you're listening. It was two years ago, Lugie, you'll tell you, John Sterling came into the studio, pops his head in. I think it was during a break. It may have been on air. Looks dead into my eyes. And I've known John for a half a, de- a decade and a half now. And he says, Eric, great to see you. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. Emmanuel, it's, dude, it is, it's a rite of passage. So, don't feel bad. He called you Emilio. Anyhow, John does his speech. John does a press conference. It's all beautiful. The Yankees come out to give him a gift, okay? Okay. I was actually getting emotional listening to this. I have to be honest with you. Not even as a Yankee fan, but just as a historian and respect for what John's accomplished. And they come out with an 85-inch television. Okay? What? Excuse me? What's what's your problem? Okay, Okay, go ahead. Keep going. So they come out with an 85-inch television, and I turn to my wife because I'm in the car listening. And I say, that is such a freaking perfect gift. And my wife's like, why is that? I mean, it's a nice gift, but why why is it so perfect? I said, because all John has said, he said it to us, and he has said it before, is all I want to do is sit on my couch and watch baseball all day and watch sports. John doesn't want to go to Paris. John doesn't want to go to Australia. John doesn't want to play golf. John doesn't want to make himself a meal. John wants to watch TV. And so the Yankees listening to John listening to John, Mm -hmm. got him a TV. And yet all these rats on social media, even Boomer ripped it this morning. How are you getting him just a TV? Because that's what he wants. It's like someone buying me a scorebook and you saying, oh, you got him was a scorebook? I love to score games. Mm -hmm. John loves to watch games. I thought the 85-inch TV, and by the way, that's a massive TV. 85 inches? How is he? He lives in the city. Yes. How is he putting an 85-inch TV in the city? I thought this. I, I did fear that. Because I said that to my I, wife. Does that and fit? It's not, and it's, I'm sure he has wall space. But the question is, because I lived in the city for yeah. a long time. He lives in Jersey, by the way. Does he? Yes. Oh, he okay. mentioned. Good. He said he has a beautiful apartment overlooking the water in Jersey. Uh, either way, it's an yeah. apartment. It's not a yeah. house. So it, you're in an apartment yeah. in Jersey City or Weehawken or somewhere I don't know right where it the is. water. I, my brother had an apartment over there when he come up, used to come up and train. The, the rooms aren't big enough to sit far enough away from an 85 inch That's the only negative. That's but the he, only negative. He had said in his pre-press conference before we knew the gift that he just had a guy hang multiple screens on the wall. He goes, you'd be shocked at how many screens that fit in the wall. So he does have the wall space, mm-hmm. clearly. Okay. That's why I thought it was such a great gift. It's actually the most perfect John Sterling gift of right, all but time. but now he's got to take down all those other TVs well, and put up another one. I would <laughs> hope the Yankees send somebody there. The real problem is handing him a jersey with the last name Sterling on the back of it. Why oh, did that be- not get any grief? Because the Yankees don't have names on their backs? Yes! That's your issue? That was the bigger gift problem. Uh, that was so un yankee Okay, so what would you do? How are you giving him a, a jersey? Because because it had 5,000, however amount of games was the number. Right. Just give him that jersey with the number on it. It doesn't need Sterling on the back. Well, I mean, doesn't it make it unique? I mean. This is really your issue? I know. Come oh, on. <laughs> you're telling me the issue people had with the TV is in a... You gave him a Jer- Yankee jersey. Yankee jersey shouldn't have the name on I the back. I have a Yankee jersey with my name on the I back. I do of too, it. but this is the voice of the Yankees. He would appreciate not having the name on the back. You know what? No, he probably would appreciate it more with his name on the back because pro- it's unique. Yeah, and also, like, the Yankees. Don't differentiate 
which is a good thing and a bad thing. So when you buy at 25, you're not locked into one player. It changes over the years. You're John Sterling. You almost have to have Sterling on the back. Here's the problem with people, and Sean's a great example of it, Mm. and all you rats on social media, you're another example of it. Why do we have to crap on something so beautiful? Like, John had this great day, okay? He gets this wonderful, thoughtful gift from the Yankees. That's the key. It was thoughtful because all this guy wants to do is watch TV and watch sports. And he gets a beautiful jersey. I got some idiot saying, how can you get him a jer- uh, t- TV? You're cheap. And then I got <laughs> Sean complaining that there's a name on the back. No, no. How about it was just a beautiful Saturday outside of the fact that the Yankees decided not to show up and not hit? I Look, I agree. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying if you were to pick a complaint, it'd be that. You really want to complain about the day? Bernie Williams kind of unaware of what his home run call was. It was a tough look, too, if you noticed that in the well, video. Well, he said Bernie. He said Bernie. Because baby. I heard something about burn, baby, burn, and you heard something. <laughs> Who, Bernie? Yes. It was like somebody gave okay, him a but, script to read. He was okay. totally unaware of what his home run call was. All right, so why would he know it? I mean, every Yankee kind of became. Okay, every Yankee. But he's the first, Tiki. I know, but why would he know it? How, how would he He's never watched it? a highlight of himself and Probably, heard that I mean. I don't sit around watching highlights of myself. <laughs> I'm being honest. I mean, uh, seriously. Look, like, and it, that's we're all- talking about the radio call. It's not the TV call that that he might have seen on replay. I'm being honest here. I'm that's being unbelie- unbelievably humble of you and the athletes. I caught one touchdown in flake football. I rewatched that thing on I, YouTube on Luke. <laughs> <laughs> look, our, our our play-by-play or play-by-play announcer on radio has been Bob Papa forever. I've known Bob since I came into the league. Awesome dude. Until I started here, and we decided to do an intro. I'd never heard Bob Papa call one of my 40-yard touchdowns or 50-yard touchdowns mm-hmm. or the 95-yarder that I had against the Oakland Raiders. I'd never heard any of that until I came here. And it was only because that audio was it was here. Right. Right? We used that audio to intro Tiki and Tierney. I- and so... Why? Why would Bernie have known the radio? I'm call? just curious now, Sean. I'm being, is there? I'm, being, I'm, I'm is curious there why you're so upset about anything this. else from John's ceremony that you want to bitch about? <laughs> I got because you can I, look I, me I straight. I an hour ago. I didn't even think I was going to do any of this. I love the ceremony. You can look me straight in the eye and tell me what are your issues from the uh, ceremony on Saturday because I know it bothers you and that's fine. Just say it. You got a problem with something from Saturday? Got a problem with something from the video on Saturday? Anything bother you on Saturday with John Sterling? I think you're alluding to something I don't know. Well, oh, you that, have no idea? That, that yeah. You're not bothered it? at all? That, that Evan was in it? <laughs> oh, that's right. No, that was great. That was nice. Yeah, big Met fan gets on there. <laughs> I knew that was coming.